Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. Connection happens because of your heart. Then something happened here. Today I want to ask you, as I ask myself, what is your connection with God? Do you have an intimate relationship with God? Or is your relationship casual? You know what I found out in my study of the Word of God? The strongest message that God speaks before His return, that He wants us about, is about love. Come with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm going to try not to make too many commentaries. It says, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. Read it again. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, that as ye have received of us, how you ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. What commandments did the Lord Jesus Christ give? Love. Verse 3. For this is the what? The will of God. Even your sanctification, the one who separates you, that ye would abstain from what? From fornication. Now, fornication is the fake love. Hmm? That's fake love. That is contact without connection. Pornea, pornography, that is contact without connection. Yeah? Verse 4. That every one of you should know how to what? Possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Possess your vessel. Possess your vessel. And the first state that he's dealing with here is about self-love that is not God-connected. Are you with me? That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. Seize control of yourself. Because the Lord, this what the Lord is saying is that the love of people are going to cold, and the reason it's waxing cold is because they become immoral, they become adulterous, they do not continue in the ways of God. And it says, seize control of yourself, possess your vessel in sanctification and honor. And verse five, watch this, not in what, in lust of concupiscence. Even as the Gentiles wish, what? No, not God. <laughs> that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. I want you to notice what it's talking about here. Because I want you to see where it's going to end. Don't defraud your brother in any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. Everyone who is a defrauder, as we also have forewarned you and testified. In other words, God says, don't defraud your brother, because God will avenge such. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Verse 7. For God had not called us unto what? Uncleanliness, but unto holiness. Verse 8. He therefore that despiseth, 
It's a very key word. Despiseth not the man, not man, but God. He therefore that despiseth, that rejects, that sets apart and looks down without loving, despiseth not man, you think, oh, I am despising this person, I am defrauding this person, I am putting this person down. He says, you're not putting any man down, you are putting God down. You are rejecting, when you reject people, you are rejecting God. Are we together? When you're not loving a person, you are not loving God. So he says, so how can you say you love God when you don't love your brother that you see? He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Verse 9, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. You should know this. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love what? One another. To do what? Love one another. First of all, it talks about the fake kind of love. And now he starts talking about true love, what it should be like. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase how? More and more. So love can be increased. Remember what I said, started out by saying connectivity has degrees, has levels? Yeah? Okay. So it's increase in your love. That you study to be what? Study to be quiet? What does that mean? That means you don't have to shoot your mouth off on every issue. Study to be quiet. And to do your own business. And to work with your own hands. As we commanded you. In other words. Let me just make a quick comment here. He says. Study to be quiet. Do your own business. In other words. Find something to do. Don't be idle. Three, and to work with your own hands. Don't be a beggar. Hello? Don't become a burden. As we commanded you, that ye may what? Walk honestly towards them that are without, and that ye may have lack of what? Nothing. Because you are quiet... Yeah? One. Two. You are taking care of your own personal business. Three. You're working with your hands. Yeah? He says, this way you end up lacking nothing. Let's go on to the next verse. Why is this, all this love thing so important? Next verse. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are what? Asleep. That you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also we sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are what? Asleep. What are we talking about now? We're talking about the return of the Lord. Are you with me? Where did it all start from? Love, love, love. Fake love, proper love. Now, loving actions 
And now he starts telling us that all of this is related to the reward of his return. 16. For the Lord shall what? Descend from heaven with a shout. You think the guy was crazy? How did we get from this, those other stuff to the Lord is going to return? Because it's all connected. And as people who love God, who are expecting Jesus to come, this is not the time for us to be lazy or to be mouthing off. He says, then how to be quiet, control your emotions, focus on doing business, taking care of your business, work. It's a good thing. Oh, Jesus is coming. I don't need to work. No. He says, this is, this is the time for you to work. Work. It's a good thing. God will take care of things. Get yourself out of that mess. He says, the Lord is going to return. He's going to come with a shout, the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And he starts to talk about the return. Love. It is crucial. Hallelujah. It is what? Crucial. Come with me to Matthew chapter 24 real briefly. Matthew 24. For the interest of time. It says, and then shall many be what? Offended. When people are offended, are they walking in love? No. Men shall be offended and shall do what? Betray one another. Is that what, what people that are loving each other do? Betray one another? No. And shall hate one another. Is that what you, people who love each other shall hate one another? No. Okay, verse 11. And many false prophets shall what? Rise and shall do what? Deceive many. Do we have that today? Okay, 12. And because of what? Iniquity. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall what? Was cold. What time is this? This is a time of his return. It's talking about end times. You say, Man of God, what are you saying to us? I'm saying, do everything to stay in love. Because that's the only way you get to stay connected. Hmm? That's the only way you're going to stay connected. When you stay in love. If you don't stay connected in love, you are going to start acting crazy. And disconnect yourself from the flow of the things of God. And then all the garbage of the devil will start flowing into your life. Remember the first study to be what? Quiet. Okay. If you study to be quiet, which means you learn how to be silent, which means that you are not shooting your mouth off, which means that your tongue is not busy doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Now let's look at James chapter 3. So, I, so, so we, 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 we pull the whole picture together. James chapter 3. I'll take it up from, uh, let's take it up from verse 5. James 3. It says, And so the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. A world of what? In, because iniquity, what? Abounds, the love of many shall what? Wax cold. So, because... In the midst of our quietness, we are in a very loud world. Do you understand? Whether it's through Facebook, Instagram, whatever. All kinds of social media... Even without you moving this, you're speaking, yeah? And so many lives have been destroyed like that. 
Now, he says, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth their whole body and set it on fire the cause of nature. And it set on fire of hell. Verse 7. Watch this. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and things in the sea is tamed and had been tamed of mankind. 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. 11. Though the fountain sent forth at the same place with water and bitter, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? It a vine figs, so can no fountain boat yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. 14. But if, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not. And lie not against the truth. 15. Let's come close to London. This wisdom. He calls it a wisdom. Go back to verse 14 again. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart. Glory not and lie not against the truth. If you have bitter envy and strife. In your heart. If you are sitting down there plotting and thinking all kinds of stuff. That are not founded in the spirit of love. It says, it says don't you align against the truth. Because there are so many people who say God said. God told me to do this and do that. And it was born out of bitter envy and strife in their hearts. It says, it says that it is a wisdom. Verse 15. It says this wisdom. Descended not from above. It didn't come from God. But it's earthly. It is sensual. It is what? Devilish. 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Then it is what? Peaceable. Then it's what? Gentle. Then it's what? Easy to be entreated. Then it's what? It's full of mercy. And it's full of what? Good fruits. And it's without what? Partiality. And without what? Hypocrisy. Those are all demonstrations of what love is. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Galatians chapter 5. We'll wrap up with this. Galatians 5. Um, I believe it should be verse 19. Galatians 5. Oh, actually, well, let, let me just... I like that verse. Go back to that one. Um, James 4. 1. And then come to Galatians 5. From whence comes wars and fightings among you, come they not hence, even of your loss that war in your members. So if you make that wrong connection, that's all you're going to get. Yeah? Okay. Galatians 5. 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, what? Inherit the kingdom of God. And remember what we said last week, or I think it was last Sunday, the way to inherit is through love. Yeah? So everything that has been listed there are not products of love. 
22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit, right? The, does it say the fruits? Okay. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Now, I know we have a, a comma there, but that should actually be a colon. Because now it's going to list out what love looks like. The fruit of the Spirit is love, which means joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no what? Law. Against such there is what? No law. Now what else is there no law connected to? Grace. So love equals grace. Hello. <laughs> I said love equals what? Grace. And the manifestation of love are all those things. Joy, peace, long suffering. So the manifestation of grace in your life is the same. That you are not walking around like you've been baptized in lemon juice and prune juice mixed together. You are not a pain in people's behind. Straight talk. Huh? When you operate in grace, you extend grace to other people. You're willing to forgive. You, you're willing to give the other person a pass. You're willing to help them. You're patient with them. You know, the Bible says the little one shall lead them. I had um, a particular family um, at our home the other day. And the kids were playing some games on the television. And I was enjoying them playing their game and knocking down things and doing stuff. And the daughter of the, of the family came to me with the tool, with the, with the um, game device, whatever you call it. And uh, said, it's your turn to play. I wasn't planning on playing. It's your turn to play. So I don't know what to do. So she starts showing me what to do. Then dawned on me. This is a principle of leadership. So I said to the, to the father, I said, she is showing me what leadership looks like. Because this leadership is about you doing something, and then you let the other person do it, while you watch, so that you're reproducing yourself. That's part of leadership. And don't know me, leadership is only possible, true leadership is only possible where love is. Leadership is truly only possible where love is. Because if you're a leader and you don't want other people to grow and experience, then you don't love them. Then you have become a user, not a lover. You love, you create an atmosphere for continued growth. And for us as God's people, our demonstration of love is not in what we can get, but what we can do to make whatever it is that we have better. Your greatest demonstration of love for the Lord, watch this last statement, is not, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I give God praise for his love for me. Your greatest demonstration of love for the Lord is that you are a soul winner. Do you know that? That's it. That you're a soul winner. I got a call this morning from the Philippines. And... Uh, His daughter was telling me, he said, 
Remember the crusade you came here to do a few years ago? I said, yes. He said, that crusade has birthed seven churches. Because we did not go there for ourselves. We went there to raise up an army. And it continues to spread. When I look, I don't, and I'm ministering the word of God. And Mama, or Pastor Daniel, Pastor Sunday, Pastor Henry, Pastor Joyce. Anyone that God brings up here. Brother Moses, I've had Brother Moses minister here, and, and so on and so on. And, and you've heard me say it over and over again. I am ministering to pastors. Have you heard me say that? Not everybody's right behind this pulpit today. But as I teach the word of God, I make sure I break it down to the point that you absolutely understand it so that any one of you can open this book under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and bring forth a word and people will get something out of it because somebody put something inside of you. Amen. Or else, you know what? I can speak to you in 10 minutes. And maybe I will try that two weeks or three weeks straight. I'll preach in 10 minutes. You get, you get a whole lot in 10 minutes, believe me. And I close that book and we go home. And the difference will be that I just preached. I did not bring you to a place where I invested inside of you. So that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Preaching is different from teaching. Huh? Two different things. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.